Welcome to 21st Sports Quick Picks for Week 3 of the 2015 NFL season. We're going to go all over all the games for Sunday and the Monday night game and give our quick picks, starting with the Atlanta Falcons at the Dallas Cowboys. As these two undefeated teams go head-to-head, -head. and the Cowboys are without Romo, they're without Des Bryant, and I'm going to have to go with the Falcons. This could be a very close game, and the Cowboys could win it if they can minimize the turnovers and protect the ball as long as they don't make mistakes. But the Falcons have just so many weapons at Matt Ryan's disposal that I think that they'll put up enough points on the scoreboard to where the Cowboys are going to have trouble keeping up with them. So now, so I got to go with the Falcons. So now we look at the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens. The Bengals are better on both sides of the ball and at all key positions. The Ravens are struggling with a new offense. They haven't even won a game yet. And I'm going with Cincinnati to remain undefeated. So now we have the Oakland Raiders at the Cleveland Browns. As these two one and one teams battle it out. If Johnny Mansell was playing, I'd still pick Oakland. And being that he isn't playing, I'm definitely picking the Raiders. Is McCown starting made this decision very easy for me. I don't really give the Browns much of a chance with him under center. So as I said, I'm going with Oakland. So we have the Indianapolis Colts at the Tennessee Titans. The Colts are winless on the season. But remember, they started 0-2 last year as well. And I believe they'll get their first win here on the road against their division rival in Tennessee. I think Andrew Luck's going to have a big game against a familiar defense that he's been able to exploit in the past. I wouldn't be surprised to see him put up three to 400 yards in this game. So we have the Pittsburgh Steelers to the St. Louis Rams, and Le'Veon Bell is making his return, and I believe he's going to return in a big way. I believe he'll have over 200 total yards in this game as he is a threat on the ground and out of the backfield to catch passes. He can take it all the way. And we saw what Matt Jones did to the Rams' defense. I believe Le'Veon Bell shouldn't have much of a problem doing much the same. So I'm going with the Steelers. Then we have the San Diego Chargers at the Minnesota Vikings. Another matchup of 1-1 one one teams. This one is a very tightly contested battle in my opinion. It's in Minnesota. We saw how much better Minnesota looked at home. But I believe that San Diego is going to win this game. Phillip Rivers is a man on a mission, and he's got enough weapons at his disposal, even without Antonio Gates. He's still got Keenan Allen, Steve Johnson, Danny Woodhead. You know, Melvin Gordon is having some success running the ball, although Minnesota did shut down the run last week. But in week one, they let up a lot of yards on the ground, so it'll be interesting to see what San Diego does. I expect Woodhead should have a pretty big day up in Minnesota. So I'm going with the Chargers. So we have the Jacksonville Jaguars at the New England Patriots. The Patriots 2-0. Jacksonville got their first win last week at home against Miami. Jacksonville's banged up, though. And on the road in New England, you got to go with the Patriots. Brady is red hot, and I believe he's going to continue to light up defenses throughout the whole year, and this game will be no exception. So let's go to the next one. New England is my pick there. And then we have New Orleans against Carolina so the Saints and the Panthers and it's in Carolina so I gotta go with the Panthers the Saints have not won a game the Panthers have not lost a game and I believe that will remain the same the Saints are looking pretty bad on both sides of the ball Breeze is also banged up and questionable so the Panthers are looking very solid on defense and even with their injury issues they're still getting by and they've been committed to the run, so they're protecting the ball, they're eating the clock, they're keeping their defense fresh, and I think the Panthers win this one. So we have the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Jets, and it's another matchup of a team without a win versus a team without a loss. And I'm very tempted to go with the Eagles here, but I gotta go with the Jets just because their defense has been playing so solid under Todd Bowles, and if they can just minimize their mistakes Last week, Fitzgerald had an interception. If he can keep it to just one or none, then the Jets shouldn't have much of a problem win this game, even though Chris Ivory's banged up and questionable. But they've got you know so much talent on that offense with Brandon Marshall, Eric Decker. Even Powell is pretty good backing up Johnson. Like I said, basically, as long as the Jets don't have a lot of turnovers, they should be able to win this game, although the Eagles are a team 
that could force some turnovers and could capitalize on that. And I wouldn't be shocked to see Philadelphia win this one, but I got to go with the Jets officially. So we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Houston Texans. The Texans haven't won a game yet this season, but I believe that changes today at home against the Bucs. I believe they can pull this one out. They're struggling to get anything going on the ground, and Foster's still not going to be back for this one. So it's going to be really, you know, dependent on their defense to keep things, you know, in hand and keep them within, you know, a position for them to get a couple touchdowns. Maybe DeAndre Hopkins has a big game. And the Bucks, they could do it as we saw that they can win on the road as they did last week. But I just think that Houston's defense is good enough to be able to get them the win here in this game as long as uh, the offense doesn't have too many turnovers. So I got to go with Houston on that one, although I think it's going to be a close game. So we have the San Francisco 49ers and the Arizona Cardinals. This is the first 4 o'clock game. And this is a battle between two division rivals. And the Cardinals are a team that are on the way up. They've been on the verge. And this year looks like it might just be their year. They started out 2-0. Carson Palmer's red hot. Saw Fitzgerald had a big week last week. But he's not the only receiver that the Cardinals got. So they got Jerron and John Brown. Not to mention Floyd. So they've got plenty of weapons. They do struggle to run the ball. But they shouldn't have much of a problem airing it out. San Francisco... You know, it's a division rivalry game, so they're going to play them tough. It should be a close one, but at, in Arizona, i got to go with the Cardinals. So we have the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins, another division rivalry game. This one, two one and one teams going at it. And this one's almost a toss-up, but i got to give it to Miami being in Miami. These two teams are pretty evenly matched. They both got good defenses. Difference on offense. The Buffalo's a better, Buffalo Bills got more of a running attack. You know the Dolphins. They do have that running attack, but they've been struggling to get that running game going this year. They got plenty of weapons for Tannehill at his disposal, and they also got some pretty good special teams. And I think that the defense of Miami is more likely to force turnovers by the Bills, whereas the Bills' defense, as good as it is. I think they're going to, you know, have less of a time being able to force Miami into mistakes. And I think that's going to be the difference is who makes the least mistakes in this game and anybody who can come up with a big special teams play. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Jarvis Landry potentially run back, you know, a kick or a punt. So I, I like the Dolphins in this one, especially being at home. So we have Chicago Bears at the Seattle Seahawks. And this is a game between two teams that have not won a game so far this year. Well, that's going to change no matter what. But you got to go with the Seahawks, especially with the return. Akila Cam Chancellor. Chancellor back. The boom is back with the Legion. And they should win this one running away. There's no Jay Cutler. It's going to be Jimmy Clausen versus Legion of Boom. Are you kidding me? I think we all know how that's going to turn out. And it's going to turn out with a big win for the Seahawks here in Week 3. So that brings us to Sunday Night Football. The Denver Broncos at the Detroit Lions. The Broncos have not lost a game. The Lions have not won a game. As the Broncos are 2-0. and And I'll tell you, they're lucky to be 2-0 and with the way they've been playing on offense. The Lions, on the other hand, they had a win in their grasp in Week 1. They let it just fall right out from under them as they have seemed to fall apart ever since being up 21-3 to against San Diego. They let the Chargers come back win, and they got beat up pretty bad by Minnesota last week. But here, I got to go with the Lions to get their first win. If their defense can force some turnovers, if they can keep, you know, Peyton off the field... And the Broncos have a very solid defense. It's going to be tough for the Lions to score. But if they can get into the end zone just a couple times and get a couple field goals, I think that they can win this one. Although it's going to be difficult for Detroit, I'm going with the Lions. So that brings us to Monday Night Football. The Kansas City Chiefs at the Green Bay Packers in what should be the game of the week. And it's going to be in front of a nationwide audience on prime time. It's going to be quite the game to watch. These are two very talented teams on both sides of the ball. The Chiefs got a mean defense. But Aaron Rodgers is playing at a level that is rare to see in sports. He's one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the position. He's been on fire. And I believe he's going to be able to rally the Packers 
to the victory, even though Eddie Lacy's banged up. So it's going to fall on Rodgers' shoulders, and I believe he will come up big on Monday Night Football as he rises to the occasion whenever it's in front of a big audience, whenever it's a big game. Rodgers always delivers. And on the other side, the Chiefs, Alex Smith, he's usually pretty good at managing a game, but he doesn't really put up, you know, big performances, especially necessarily in prime time. It's happened, but I got to go with the Packers, especially in Lambeau Field. You got to go with Green Bay. So those are the quick picks for week three. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Definitely interested to see where you agree or disagree and what your picks may be for week three. Thank you very much for listening. It is appreciated. I hope you're having a good day and had a good weekend. And enjoy all the sports.